Greetings from Advent Lutheran Church. My name is Tim Jan. I'm the pastor of this congregation. I'm glad to be able to bring to you the preaching text and my sermon for this upcoming Sunday, which is going to be September 24th, 2023. Let's pray. O God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we might delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Paul writes, For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well since you are having the same struggle that I had, you saw I had, and you hear that I still have. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, you know that God is really up to something in your life if you can give thanks even from a prison cell. The Apostle Paul is in prison. He's writing a letter to the Christians in Philippi from prison. And Philippi is a major trade city north of Greece, and he's writing a thank you note. The Philippian church has given generously to Paul's ministry and to his collection for people in need. They've been faithful. Of the 99 problems that Paul faces in his ministry and with many of his new founded churches, the Philippians aren't one. So Paul writes them a thank you note. In a way, it's also a thank you note to God. Throughout his letter, Paul talks about things every Christian can be thankful for, regardless of their life situation. So our fall sermon series is Thankful in Christ. And we'll start with Thankful for Trouble in Christ. Now that may seem impossible, may seem like a paradox. It may seem even a little bit dysfunctional to say thankful for trouble. How can we be thankful for trouble? Paul is in prison. And in Paul's time, prison isn't just a sentence that you serve for a set period of time after a jury trial. If you're unlucky enough to be thrown in prison, you stay there. Until A, a wealthy person bails you out, B, a powerful person pardons you, or C, you get executed. And Paul is honest with his listeners that he's not sure which one he prefers. It isn't that he doesn't want to live. It's that his faith in Christ grounds his whole life. If it's his time, then he's okay with that. He will be with Christ. But if his mission isn't done, if he can still help other believers in some way, he wants to keep going. Paul is in trouble. 
Other ego-driven preachers are going around the country preaching out of envy and rivalries. And while Paul is locked up, he can't do anything about it. And that drives him nuts. He's a control freak with no control. Yet even while he's in prison, he realizes God is working. And the good news is being spread regardless. So he gives thanks. He gives thanks even for his troubles in Christ. You know, we're prisoners too, in a lot of ways. Prisoners of things we can't control. Prisoners of finances. Prisoners of illness. Prisoners of stress. Prisoners of unhealthy family dynamics. Prisoners of world events. Prisoners of social injustices that keep on getting worse. And if we can give thanks to God, even from the prison cell of our troubles, then we know that God is up to something in our lives. There are a few different kinds of trouble. Some trouble is trouble that we choose because of Christ. That's what the late Representative John Lewis called good trouble. Never be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. We will find a way to make a way out of no way. Good trouble is getting into trouble for the sake of justice. But then there is dumb trouble that we get ourselves into by making unwise choices. No judgment. We've all been there. I've locked my keys in my car three times now, and I still haven't gotten around to making a spare one. And then finally, there's random trouble. And I think this is the worst kind for me. There's the stuff that just comes out of left field and breaks your heart. The stuff that you never could have predicted, that you never could have avoided, yet here it is. And sometimes it just locks you up in a cell of grief and throws away the key. It's easy enough to give thanks for good trouble if deep down you know in your heart that you're doing the right thing. You can give thanks for dumb trouble if it helps you learn a lesson for next time. But random trouble... That's the hardest to be thankful for. It's hard to make sense of. And frankly, it's hard to hear these words from Paul where he says, this is God's doing. For God has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. It's hard to make sense of that reality that maybe the trouble we face is a gift from God for which we can give thanks. Now, I don't believe that God gives us all our troubles. I don't believe that God makes us sick. I don't believe that God causes wars or natural natural disasters. I don't believe God causes all our failures and heartbreaks. What I do believe is what Paul believed. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I believe in Christ... He's not just Lord of my Sunday mornings. He's not just Lord of my bedtime prayers. He's Lord of my whole life, 24-7. Every day, every hour, every moment, the good ones and the sucky ones. Christ is Lord of it all. If God graciously gives me the privilege of believing in Christ, if the Holy Spirit gives me the gift of having faith and having hope, then there is no part of my day, week, month, or year that is not touched by Christ. I see it all within the context of who Jesus is to me and what he means to me and what he has done for me. It's all in Christ. There's a difference between saying Christ is a big part of my life and saying living is Christ. If living is Christ for us, then there's no trouble we face, no matter how unjust, no matter how dumb, no matter how random, where we can't find Jesus's presence. He's in all of it. And if everything we do is in him, and for him, then even the really hard stuff is for him too. True, you're not going to have Roman guards throw you in prison for being a believer anymore, although many Christians are still persecuted in other parts of the world. 
Still, the troubles we face can be for Christ if our lives are for Christ. If we talk to our friends about Christ being in our lives, even when our lives are hard. You can't always control whether or not you're suffering, but you can control how you tell your story. You can control if that suffering is in Christ, if you understand it to be part of your life in Christ. If Jesus gives our lives meaning, if he can give, he can give our pain and our tears and our, even our deaths meaning too. We can give thanks for troubles in Christ because troubles in Christ are troubles that remind us we're never alone. I listened to a podcast from Robert Waldinger who leads the Harvard Happiness Study. It's the longest running study in history. They've been studying people's lives for 85 years. One stunning finding is that happiness is not about your circumstances. Above a certain threshold, if your basic needs of life are met, then wealth does not make you any happier. What does, he found, is relationships. Believe it or not, he found that loneliness, having few or no meaningful relationships, is as bad for your physical health as smoking all your life. No joke. Whatever trouble we face, if we face it together, with the people that we love, and with Christ, they can reveal gifts from God. They can reveal thanksgivings. I'm ashamed to say I, never, I knew almost nothing about the city of Baltimore, the city where I lived, until there was trouble there. Until the uprisings after the death of Freddie Gray in police custody in 2015. It was unjust. It was wrong. And when the people in the streets were, re streets were reacting violently to his death, and when we saw how much anger and frustration there was out there, it was eye-opening. I do give thanks that it brought Christians together in that moment. Local churches gathered together for prayer. Lutheran pastors prayed in front of barbed wire fences and hummers that were all set up in front of the courthouse. And in the worst night of the turmoil, our own bishop gathered with other faith leaders and walked the streets as people of peace, setting themselves at risk in order to hopefully set a moral example and to pray their way through the city. But more than that, more than all those things that I witnessed, I give thanks for the uncomfortable perspective that I gained from that event when the whole city was hurting together and our synod's vice president, who was African-American and a long, lifelong Baltimorean, said that for white and black residents, there have always been two Baltimores. I never drove through the neighborhoods of West Baltimore again without pondering her words, without being troubled by them. It hurt to hear that, but I gave thanks for it because it got me into some good trouble of thinking about these things. It was Christ teaching me something I wouldn't have learned any other way. Finally, I want to talk about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a pastor in prison for resisting the Nazis. He got himself into good trouble, but it was a lot of trouble. And he wrote a poem that helps me understand giving thanks for trouble in Christ. Giving thanks is different from being happy. Giving thanks is simply seeing our trouble through the eyes of faith. Bonhoeffer writes, Who am I? They often tell me, I would step from my cell's confinement calmly, cheerfully, firmly, like a squire from his country house. Who am I? They often tell me, I would talk to my warders freely and clearly as though it were mine to command. Who am I? They also tell me I would bear days of misfortune equably, smilingly, proudly, like one accustomed to win. Am I then really all that which other men tell of? Or am I only what I know of myself, restless and longing and sick, like a bird in a cage, struggling for breath as though hands were compressing my throat, yearning for colors, for flowers, 
for the voices of birds, thirsting for words of kindness, for neighborliness, trembling with anger at despotisms and petty humiliation, tossing in expectation of great events, powerlessly trembling for friends at an infinite distance, weary and empty at praying, at thinking, at making, faint and ready to say farewell to it all. Who am I? This or the other? Am I one person today and tomorrow another? Am I both at once a hypocrite before others and before myself a contemptibly woebegone weakling? Or is something within me still like a beaten army fleeing in disorder from a victory already achieved? Who am I? They mock me these lonely questions of mine. Whoever I am, thou knowest, O God, I am thine.